next member, gentleman from Virginia, remotely, Mr. Whitman for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman uh, Napolitano and Ranking Member Rouser, and I want to thank you for allowing me to testify before you today, and I'm honored to highlight some of the needs facing Virginia as you consider the upcoming Water Resources Development <clears throat> Package. The Water Resources Development Act is necessary legislation that provides for improvements to the nation's ports, inland waterways, flood protection, ecosystem restoration, and other water resources infrastructure and policy. Water infrastructure is vital to moving goods throughout the country from products we all use every day in our lives and to crops and goods we produce domestically and send abroad. And I hope this committee in the House upholds its duty to authorize nationally important water infrastructure improvements that are more locally driven. Furthermore, I'd like to thank the Corps of Engineers as they work hard to manage more than 1,500 water resource development projects, many of them in Virginia. The Army Corps of Engineers is critical to our Commonwealth from the Norfolk Harbor channel widening and deepening project to the public waterways restoration projects across Virginia. As a proud representative of the Commonwealth of Virginia, home of the Port of Virginia, one of the largest and busiest ports on the Eastern Seaboard, advancing the work being done by the Port of Virginia to improve and expand its operations is critical. The port manages cargo that is shipped to all 48 contiguous states. The Port of Virginia is a national gateway for commerce, supporting business across the country. Moreover, in Virginia's first district, 334 businesses utilize the services of the Port of Virginia. As a catalyst for commerce, the port is attracting growth, fostering development and creating jobs. On the state level, cargo moving through the port supports more than 530,000 jobs statewide and generates an excess of $90 billion in annual economic impact in Virginia. I would also like to take this time to highlight some word of priorities the subcommittee should look at in deliberating this bill. Anchorage F is currently designed as a 3,000 foot circle for free swinging bow anchoring. This is in the Norfolk Harbor and Channels. The anchorage in its current design is used primarily as an emergency anchorage in inclement wave weather in the harbor or in situations of unexpected delays. For vessels to effectively utilize the anchorage, it is imperative and common sense for the anchorage and approach depths to match that of the federal channel. A deeper and wider anchorage will allow further use of the anchorage beyond the primary function and permit use by larger vessels calling on our port. Additionally, an improved anchorage and anchorage approach could provide passing vessels safe harbor during storm conditions. The proposed modification includes widening the anchorage F beyond its currently authorized diameter of 3,620 feet to a diameter of 3,840 feet and deepening the anchorage to 55 feet consistent with the 1986 authorization in the project depth of the federal channel project. These costs have been developed to a planning stage level of confidence and remain within the project section 902 cost limit. Also request for coastal resiliency funding for the Hampton Roads area. I request that the legislative language to allow United States Corps of Engineers to include federal property in their feasibility studies for the Norfolk Hampton Roads area by allowing the Corps to include federal properties for an upcoming coastal storm risk management study, the peninsula and greater Hampton Roads, it would solve the restriction problem in incorporating those installations and facilities into the civil works planning and construction process. The intent of this language is narrowly focused on the CSRM study on the peninsula. It is intended only to assure that the United States Corps of Engineers studies are comprehensive and holistic. The language is not intended to indicate that the Corps of Engineers has a responsibility for carrying out civil projects on federal installations. I believe this common sense language will ultimately produce a better report for action and range of actors in the region and will make sure that we coordinate across a variety of different uses, including federal facilities and military facilities. I want to thank the chairwoman, the ranking member and members of the committee for the opportunity to testify before you today. And I look forward to working with the committee and the Corps as we move forward towards finishing WERDA 2022. Thank you, Mr. Whitman. Are there any questions of the, of the members?